Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we're going to be looking at this Behringer DJX700 and it is a pro mixer. So I suppose if you like a bit of DJing you may have this or something very similar. Now this was sent in to me by a viewer named Matt. Apologies Matt, it's taken me ages to look at this. My whole life has been just uh, sidetracked by the car as you can imagine. But I'm finally looking at it now. Now I have found a couple of faults with it. With Matt he said that there was a problem with channel 2 and also channel 3 and channel 3 was completely dead. Now I don't know whether it's intermittent or whether or not it's been knocked about in transit but as far as I can see channel 3 is working but there's definitely two interesting things on channel 2 and that is that the right channel is not working and the mid range here makes a really really strange sound. Doesn't matter what you're on every time you do this it makes a strange sound so let me get the camera on the tripod get my phone connected to it get the little bluetooth speaker connected to it and i'll show you what i mean okay now i've got it connected up to my phone and a little bluetooth speaker bluetooth speaker is in the master and this one is in channel one here and i'm over the cd side of that channel so there's different inputs at the back i'll show you that later so if i turn it on and if i press play and the second attempted repair and then the you can hear that it's working repair. and if Treat you have a look here if you have a look here you will see that this going up on left and right and attempted repair. it's kind of even hello 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 it's my mate vince here yeah. and for the first time on this channel we're going to be trying to fix up a... so you can see that that is working correctly now let me go to number three which is not supposed to be working but as far as i can see that's working then i'm going to show you the fault in fact i can show you the fault on number two when i'm in number three here so if you have a listen here if i was to go to systems i'm using you can hear it's there from an nes because it's ac to AC, and i'm using the av out from a so game as far as i can see that's working but check this out you ready cables to make it work Basically, this one's no power and the other two have power this one's not anything and this one's just displaying purple screen so every time that goes yellow. up no that matter what channel video, you're on it affects it so let's go over to and number four turn it on there's no power light whatsoever and my adapter's definitely okay because when i put it here okay power. so you can see that that's definitely not right one, now watch this on channel two that there's power yep Oh, I've had to put this bit of paper at the bottom because the rubber feet have gone so... Can you hear it sounds different? That's, and also, uh, look here. It's already well, when it's it came, all on the left, not on the right. Yeah, so the right down. is really, really can't. quiet. If I take out the right, it doesn't really make any difference. This one's got no power. Yeah? Okay, so I missed And now if I take out the left, it drops right down. So the volume isn't equal on it. And it doesn't matter if I mess around with this. That would have been when I had the... Or this. Master you can oh, still see there's a massive master. imbalance. Yeah. Right, let's turn that off. So as far as I can see, at this moment in time, there's two faults. So uh, I think it's going to be quite interesting, especially I'm looking forward to what is causing this mid thing going on. Really, really odd. So uh, I'm going to take it up to the blue mat. We'll have to work out how we take it apart. I can see screws around the edge here. Hopefully it is serviceable. And uh, while I'm doing that, Matt's going to explain how a mixer works in kind of layman terms because he's going to be able to explain it a lot better than me. So if you already know how it works, maybe skip forward the next three minutes or so. And uh, if you don't, watch this little bit here and hopefully you will understand it more. Hi Vince, it's Matt. So uh, I just want to make you a quick video, mainly so I can give you a little bit of a run through on how uh, the mixer should work. Uh, hopefully you can get it fully working. Uh, but again, just to say thank you for, for all the inspiration for the videos. So uh, I'm here in my man cave now. Uh, uh, so welcome. Uh, I've, uh, as you probably tell in the background, I've been working on uh, fixing quite a bit of He-Man items. So uh, one of my uh, items at the moment is uh, is actually the uh, the artillery section uh, for this guy, Beam Blaster. So I'm just waiting for a new motor coming for that at the moment. So this is kind of a, a work in progress. But that's not why we're here. What we're actually coming here for is uh, to give you a bit of a run through on this is my new mixer, my DJM600. So I've got it connected into quite a few items over here. 
But what we're going to do really just give you the basics. So on the main mixer here, uh, very similar to the Behringer. So we're just going to work with, uh, with uh, actually I'm on channel two here because I was going to my Walkman. So as you see on the back, very easy. You've just got uh, right and left. So uh, red and white, pretty standard. So this bit of a high quality cable that I use because it's going out to a Walkman. And what you have on here, as you can see, you'll have a master left and right so this just runs out to kind of any any amp or or any hi-fi system you've got i've got it plugged into a, a dolby surround sound system down here that's just for getting the volume out you could plug it into kind of a bluetooth speaker or anything as long as you've got a kind of a line in our headphone socket that you can plug that into just so you can get some sound out we'll use for this we're going to use the uh EX80, so this is one that I fixed base on the back of your video. Literally, new belt, bit of a clean, <laughs> bit of re-oil and grease, working good as new. So uh, thanks again for that. So what we'll do is we'll just plug this in. So you mean about one-handedness in your videos, it's not exactly the easiest. Again, there we go. So I plugged in, we've got a tape here, which we've actually been rewinding in my cassette deck down here. So let's just open this up and pop this in, side A, bit of Robert Miles, you can't go wrong. Okay, so that's all set up, ready to play. So onto the mixer. So first things first is I always reset the channel. So just reset all down here. You can put the fader in the middle, will not be assigned in the fader really. But again, you would just set it with the, that side would be on over here. So that'd be channel two. And this side will be up here. So if you want channel three, channel one, whichever you way you want it to fade, and then that would fade. But you just want to put that in the center there. You can set your channel if you want. So you could say set that to channel one, but obviously we're on channel two. The main item that you're going to really want on here is going to be this here. So this is kind of the uh, the up fade rather than the cross fade. And we're also this is this here, which is the uh, which is the trim or the gain. So worth noting, if this is all the way here on zero. That's effective, it's not gonna let any any uh, sound through. So we'll put that around about in the middle. So we can power it on. If we power on our stereo down here. And essentially that's it, we're set up. So we've got a bit of volume coming up on the up fade on channel two. We've got some master volume here. We've got volume on our stereo itself. So we should now in theory be set up. So if we go to our Walkman, let's play, oh, turn off hold. There we go. And if we give it a, a second or two, so it's at the beginning of the tape, so I rewound it. Just gonna hear the music sounds come through. And again, if it's on zero, you get nothing. Obviously, we get nothing there, and again, we'll get nothing from the master volume. So, effectively, that is it in its basic form. So, all you need to do make sure that you've got, say, the trim in the middle, bit of volume there, bit of volume on, on the master, and the crossfader in the middle. And effectively, whatever you're playing, then as long as it's through the uh, in the channel, you're all good, right? I hope that helped. <laughs> Sorry for my uh, uh, my long windedness there. But yeah, good luck fixing it. Uh, and I hope to see the video when you're all done. Thanks, mate. Bye. Thank you, Matt. So hopefully if you didn't understand about mixers before, hopefully you understand it more now. So looking around here, it looks like this whole back thing is, look at all those connections. It looks like all this here is one piece of metal. You see the way it's sort of folded over. So we have got some screws at the back there. But I'm thinking if we were just to undo these screws on the top here, down the side, that it might lift off. So that's what I'm gonna do. That's quite a few screws to undo. So I'll just fast forward through it and I'll give a shout out to the My Mate Vince Massive. And this month, the wonderful members are kitdigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, Having Fun Repairs, Edinburgh Amplifier Repair and Service, Will Michaelis, Chris Seal, Felipe at MrKeebs.com, King Curd from Low Book Auto Sales, DJVG, Ellis Garbutt, Pigsy, Kenneth Blenstrup Sorensen, Simba Tinabu, Gabe McCandless, Extrem 401, Robert from Timsey's Auto Air, and Daniel 
Watson. So now we should be just about ready to see what's inside this beauty. Look at this, we've got effects as well. We'll have to see what that does later. Right, so I just did the outer ones and uh, it wants to come out. There's loads more on the inner ones, but maybe they're to connect up inside the panels. Ooh, look at all this. I'm sure this is gonna look interesting. Here we go. Ooh, look at this here now. Right. So we've got an add-on board here. Right, well, I may have to look at this backboard because remember we haven't got the, the right audio working on channel two. But I think to begin with, let's mess with that potentiometer type thing. So now, what should I do next? Do all the buttons have to come off at the front if I want to have a look at it? I think they do. So it looks like they're pretty much all the same, apart from this one here hasn't got the white bit in. I wonder why that hasn't got it in. Is that worn away or is that intentional? Yeah, so I'm gonna to have to pop all these off. Let me take a picture of them just to see if, uh, are they actually gonna come off? Yeah, they are, yeah. Oh wow, it's a complete different color underneath. Look at that, look at the difference. Yeah, and they have a flat bit in them here, so you can't actually get them on the wrong way. Well, I'm going to take a picture. That's a tough one to get up. This will give a lovely opportunity to clean it all. Now I am working on limited tools here because all of my tools are in the uh, Rolls Royce. <laughs> Still feels so weird saying that. Right, let's undo these other six screws now on the inside. Let's see if we can lift off this metal front. All right, there's plenty more screws to undo down here. So it looks like all the front is aluminium here, so it looks very nice. Right, I just need to undo this phone, uh, headphone jack down here. So it's got a lot of the hot glue on it. Well, that's not wanting to come off, so I'm going to use some IPA on that. And that will hopefully remove it nice and easy. So IPA, or isopropyl alcohol, is really good at removing the, the hot glue you get from glue guns. There you go, you see how it just uh, seems to just make it slippery and come straight out, it's pretty good. And we have a microphone one up here. Just here, so let's put some on that. Again. 
Right, and they can't go in any other way because they've got little bits sticking up there that fits into the groove. Okay, so that's really easy to clean now. That can just be wiped down. Now, what do we have here? So, we are dealing with this one here, wasn't it? No, we were dealing with this one here. Right, so why is that faulty compared to the others? Got a nice big linear transformer here. Well, I think just to make it easier for myself, I am going to undo all this uh, glue here. Okay, so pretty much all of the weight is coming from the transformer there. The rest of it's quite lightweight. Okay, now what have we got going on? It is a shame that channel three does appear to be working. I did notice these on the back. There's these little switches here. So uh, I think what that does is, apparently with the phono input, so if you look at line one here, they're both line inputs, because CD apparently is the same as line. But when it comes to phono, it's like millivolts needs to go into it, rather than volts, which would go into line in and CD. And, uh, I believe when you press these, I don't know if it's press or unpress, I, think, I presume it must be press, then it goes, it changes to phono ones into line in. So then you can, I think, safe, don't quote me on this, I think you can then safely put in like something like a CD player or a, a tape deck or something rather than the phono, which would be a record player. So maybe that button had accidentally got pressed and uh, the phono was acting like a line jack, in which case then the phono signal might not have been enough to kind of uh, actually come up on it if it was expecting to see voltage rather than millivolts. Right, so we're dealing with this one here. Right, so there's loads of pins on here. So I was expecting to see three connections, like the wiper, and then two of the, uh, you know, two of the other ones, like a potentiometer. So I don't know why we've got six. Should we see if any of them are in common with each other? Right, so it looks like they're in common, and those two are in common. Just want to zoom in, see if I can see the traces. No, I don't know what this meter beeps out. I'm just going to get an ohms reading through there. It's coming up at about three ohms. It says 33, hold on. Oh no, we've got a little K there. Well, no, we haven't. It just says three ohms. Let's see what this one reads. Oh, weird, it also reads three ohms. Strange, isn't it? Let's go into the one next to it. No, that's eleven thousand ohms. 
Okay, let's see if maybe we found our problem ready. Let's turn that one all the way to there. Oh, but these are different here. So now let's turn that the same and let's turn that one the same. So they're all turned the same way either side of the 41. Yeah, there you go, three ohms. Right, okay, so obviously it changes as you turn the uh, potentiometer around. So we go from three ohms there to go fully around the other way. Yeah, 11k. Right, uh, okay, that's not making any sense. Because why when we turn that, is it making that really weird noise? Well, I suppose the good news is, is that they all look to be the same. So I wonder whether I could just, for example, swap over the potentiometer using the desolder gun. And then see if that makes a difference. If it's fixed it, we know the potentiometer is faulty. And if it doesn't, maybe we can swap over this IC here, this IC15, and swap it over to the one next to it there. And then see if the fault moves. I'd have to double check. But they're the same, so what's that? V4580M, V4580M, yeah, N6059B, N6095B, yeah, so they're going to be the same. Well, I think it'd be easy enough to swap some of these over. In fact, I can just swap it for the one underneath it, they're going to be the same. Keep it on the same 41 here. So uh, I just have to unsolder this big one, this one, big one, that one, that one, and then these six small ones. Let's do that. So these are through hole components, so the desolder gun should handle them no problem. But it doesn't work. I have real trouble with the anchor points. So what I then try to use is a bit of solder wick on the anchor points to try to wick up some of the solder. That still doesn't work. So then I use the soldering iron to melt the solder on the anchor points and then use the desolder gun to suck up the solder and it still doesn't work. So then I add leaded solder to all the points in the hope that that will reduce the temperature a bit because this is going to be unleaded on the board due to the age of it. And guess what? It still doesn't work so then I have to bring my old friend the low melt solder out and then that works an absolute treat and they just drop out so you will see the low melt solder again later on in the video well there you go you can see it's starting to come out now there we go much easier with the low melt right let's do the one above it There we go. Right, so now, this is the suspected 41, so I'm going to leave that up here. And now I'm just going to clean up all this mess. Okay, so let's put the good one where the 41 used to be. It's amazing, that chip quick solder, I uh, I didn't use it, I, I bought it and I didn't really use it for a good year and a half or two years. Now I seem to be using it all the time.
Hold us in firmly, and let's do this one here. And that's in nice as well. Right, let's solder them back in. this whole flux pen that I used to use before I got like the tacky flux so let's just put a bit of that on just to make the joints a little bit neater and then I can clean it all with IPA Okay, so they've both been swapped over now. So let's connect up the back connectors again, get power into it, and let's see if it's still making that really, really weird noise. Or has the fault moved to this one here? If it has, we know it's the potentiometer thing that's faulty. If it's still here, I don't know. Oh, we'll just have to trace it maybe. Is that chip that's faulty? Really weird. Okay, so I've got the speaker plugged in here. I've got my phone down here. And uh, what I did notice is on these three, they're actually different than the top, top ones. So all of these ones are different than these ones here. Because on this one, there's no kind of middle when you turn it, it doesn't click. While with these, they all click there. So that's like the middle. Right, let's plug it in and see what happens. Obviously, I'm keeping my hands well away from where the mains is down here. Okay, so it's already on. So now, if I was to, uh, one second, uh oh, right, I don't want it to short against that now, I wasn't expecting it to topple over so easily, let me get something, let me get something bigger, I've unplugged it from the mains, uh, let me get some, a cereal box or something like that. There we go. Right, I'm going to plug it back in now. And let's press play. We're on the correct one there. Hi there, my name's Vince from My Mate Vince, and welcome to another episode of Trying to Fix Up the Cheapest Rolls Royce in the Country. Do you notice anything? What is going on there? So basically, it's working now without that weird noise and also it's coming through both speakers because look you can see the lights are coming up let me just make sure I am definitely on number two down there so that one over here is from Mike isn't it I think one second so we have got Mike this one channel one channel two this was the problem here oh we've lost our sound Right, okay. I mean, obviously it's good that it's fixed, but uh, can you even see this? Hold on. There we go. Different about me. <sighs> Check it out. Rachel's been busy over at Puddle. Look at that. For merch. I haven't oh, released this video yet. Well. Got some new merch. Check it out. Do like me a yellow t-shirt. Look at that. You gotta admit now that Pud is Puddle nice. did a good job there. So if you're interested in any merch, because I've just found out how much the distribution valves cost for underneath the driver's seat, you know the bottom there, the thing that was leaking. And uh, I'm honestly in shock. It's working. 500 quid, and I don't even know if that's a refurbished one. 500 quid. Unbelievable. I don't think I can fix it. There's no seal kits for it, so I think I'm going to have to uh, 
buy the actual valve itself, but I have seen on eBay people are selling used ones, just straight off a broken car, for uh, 200 and something pound. But a bit of a risk, because I could put it on here, and maybe a week or two later it will go. So uh, if you just happen to be in the market for a new mug, then you never know. You might be helping a small bit towards that valve. Hold on a minute. So what am I doing in this episode today? Look. I don't really know. I think I'm going to have a look at the seats. Also, this arrived. One second. Myself, you know the backlight is all uh, flashed up, so I bought myself a backlight. Now that I paid roughly, I think about eighty pound for seventy, eighty, something like that. I don't mind that because you seem to be getting quite a lot for your money. But five hundred pound for a little valve just seems to be. Sorry, a little bit confused. I'm going to put the volume up full again. I thought I seen this dropping back down again. Yeah, I thought I seen that one up full and that one dropping down which was the problem we had with the left and right audio. So by doing this, not only have we got rid of that annoying noise, not annoying, good noise, uh, we've also got rid of the fact it's only coming through one channel. But when I had it on full, I think it started to drop down again. So just bear with me. Uh, extortionate, but still it is a Rolls Royce and everybody said it was gonna be expensive. And uh. yes, it certainly is. Hence the reason why I try to fix what's already here. So in this episode today, maybe so now I'll look. try and fit that light. I think I'm going to have a look at it's the passenger seat as well to find out why it's not yeah, moving forward. It's not working down that channel again. Why? Working, but I think I'm going to have a look at the passenger seat. Also, the driver's seat at the back where those springs are broken, so you haven't got the same support so when you lean here. back. I might look at that as well. So uh, yeah, let's get started. Luckily, it's going to oh, be sunny it's this all thing day. Here. Today. Hottest day in the UK so far look, this year. Let's put that one so, on for. So I haven't got to worry about. The do this t-shirt though. So happy with Look. it. Right, let's get it's started. It's this thing here. Right, I think I'm going to start so on the seat here. I'm going to hold it there. So, okay. squeeze myself in. It should look like that side there. But, when I do it but there, it's all snapped and broken. So I think what happens is, I'm not sure how it's attached over there, but each one comes along and then it wraps itself around, you know, one bit of steel. I can't move it now. And goes along wraps itself around again and carries on. I think it needs and a clean in here. The whole thing will be sort of tied in. But right now, can you see that the springs here are bowing yeah, these bits out. out? So you can see they're no longer in a straight line. They're bowing here. Well, if you look at that one, can you see they're nice and straight down? Because they're being pulled together bit by bit by, uh, by each of them. So that is under quite a lot of tension. Whether or not you're going to feel any different or not, probably not, but it, it's not designed to be broken like yeah. this. But anyway, look what I found in the shed that I think might be suitable. So I've got this big, well I haven't, my dad's got this big coil of wire here, he calls it binding wire. I think he used it, or uses it, to fix up uh, yeah, one of the fences in the hedge. You know where the sort of sticks go into the ground and then you wrap this round, go onto the next stick, wrap it round right. to kind of keep them apart from each other. So when we drop it, it seems to work better. When we put it on full, it was different again. This needs cleaning, I'm sure of it. So let me turn this off and I'm gonna uh, either take this out or just get some deoxid in there and clean it. So I'm unplugging it again now. So I think really this was, uh, this was a very simple fix. It's just, I don't really know what I did to fix that. And that's of course by swapping it over, the heat or something cleans something in here. I just don't know. I was expecting that to be something more major than just a potentiometer, because why would the potentiometer cause a squeak like that? Every time we turned it on, and all I've done is swap them over. That's a little bit odd. Hmm, a little bit annoying when you fix something and you don't know why. So I suppose in hindsight, maybe what I should have done is just took the potential water off and put it back on again, just to see if it cleared it. Because uh, right now, I don't know whether it was something on the board or whether it was something on the potentiometer. Not too sure. Anyway, let's have a little look here. So we're gonna have one, two, four at the bottom and two there. I might unsolder that just to see what it looks like on the inside, it'd be interesting to see. Let's see if I can take this off completely. It'd be useful for other people to know as well because then they know whether they can actually change these out by spare ones. Because this equipment isn't cheap. It's worth repairing. Okay, I'm just gonna use a low melt on here as well. So isn't that weird? I was expecting that the uh, audio only coming through one side 
was to do with maybe something nearer the jack, but it wasn't, it's this one here. So I suppose when we take it off, there must be one side for left and one side for right. And it just so happens when you slide it up and down, it's sliding them both up left and right at the same amount. Right, I can tell they're all loose, and they're loose, and there you go, it's out. So easy, isn't it? Look. Unbelievably easy. Really, really is. Okay, so we have two tracks there. One, one in the middle, two, two, and three up there. So if we were just to open these up, then hopefully we can actually see what's on the inside. Oh, two in the middle as well. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I think what it is, is just dust. If you look at the fingers, let me just zoom right in to show you. I wanna make sure I don't put this round back to front. So how am I gonna remember which way this goes? Because it can go in either way, can't it? Well, do you know what? It doesn't actually matter which way round this goes, because this is the thing that gets soldered onto the board. So this is gonna be uh, bi-directional, isn't it? So it doesn't actually matter. But anyway, yeah, look, uh, let me zoom in and show you. So it looks like the track itself isn't very worn. That looks quite nice. What can you see here? I think it's just dirt on these fingers. Yeah. So you know what I'm going to do? I am going to get my dirt blaster thing and I am going to the vac. And I'm going to basically uh, blow in all of these and hopefully that will clear out the dust from it. And I think I'm going to put a bit of deoxit on these fingers. Just needs to be on the very edge of the fingers there. And I'll put a little bit here. Now I suppose some people would unsolder every single one and then put deoxit in every one of them. But I'm thinking if I use the data vac, not the dirt blaster, the data vac. Dirt blaster is a car share, isn't it? If I use the data vac, then I'm thinking I don't think this worked properly because of dust. And if the data vac can get rid of all the dust, then it should be fine. I can't go over how powerful this is now that I've gone over to the bigger nozzle. Well, I'll put this on the same way as all of the rest of them. So they have a little triangle here design. So I'm gonna just put it on the same way, even though I don't think it would make any difference. There's a triangle design there. So two pins up the top, four pins down the bottom.
That feels nice. Right, let me just explain how this works here because I've just been messing with it. If you have a look, you can see it's all numbered. We've got two, one, one, two down the bottom and three up there. So basically, if we go between one and two and then slide it all the way, it will go from zero ohms, so a short, to a hundred thousand ohms. If we go between these two on the right hand side, one and two here, it will go between 100,000 ohms and zero ohms. And if we go between the outer ones, two and three up here on this side, then on this side here, it will go between zero and 100,000 ohms. And again, between here and here, zero and 100,000 ohms. So I think it is working as left and right. So if I was to go here and here and go all the way up here, you will see now we are a complete short. And now look, as I start to move it down, can you see it will grow? So we're now at 44,000 ohms, go a bit more. 85,000 ohms, a bit more. 97, all the way to there where we get to 100. Yeah, and same if we go onto this side here. So you now see we will be at uh, 100. And go all the way to here, and it'll be a short. Yeah, roughly in the middle. It's weird how the middle's not 50. So where is 50? Around here. There. Well, I suppose it just depends how it's been set up. Right, so that's there. And if we were to go between two and one on this side, and the same will apply for the other side there. So if you have a look now, can you see we are the same reading, 40. Go all the way up, it'd be a short. No, sorry, that's 100,000 ohms, and that way will be the short. There you go. Yep, so that's how that works. Right, I'm gonna solder that back in. Well, I'm just gonna to try to tack this in place first with my hand holding it underneath because uh, otherwise it's just gonna keep falling out. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of solder on my soldering iron. Right, now I know that can't go anywhere, I'll get some flux on that. and I'm just gonna clean it with IPA. Okay, I think I'm happy with that board. I think that is gonna work okay now. So, what am I, uh, what do I have to do? I have to add a few bits of glue back on when I put it back together and I just need to quickly clean the front aluminium face. So initially I was thinking to use a wet wipe here but I don't want to wipe away any of these markings so I think I'm just going to use a microfiber cloth and uh, yeah that's coming off but I'm just going to make it ever slightly damp. Yeah, 
that's getting rid of the stains, lovely. See that mark there? All gone. Oh, these are still have the protective cover on. Oh, I'd like to take that off, but I won't. Yeah. Hmm. Now, obviously, Matt, you're a He-Man fan. If you have time, check out Roger from Retro Tech Repair. He was on the YouTube Fixers twice. I really like watching Roger. And uh, yeah, recently he did a He-Man sword, his latest video. More interesting than you think. And uh, the inside of it was uh, clever how it worked because when you hit the sword like this, it used to make a noise. How does it make that noise? So you think on a phone or something, it would have some sort of motion sensor. Well, this is old, so it hasn't got a motion sensor. It's got like a kind of uh, a different way of doing it, I won't give it away, but uh, it was quite interesting. It was sent in to him by Toy Poloi, that's another YouTuber, who does a great job restoring old toys. Real restorations, not the ones that are just made dirty and then they're uh, cleaned for millions of views. Well, I think that is looking lovely. So I'm just gonna pop it back together. Next time you see it, it will be back together and I'll uh, I'll give it a test, the effects and stuff like that, make sure it's working differently than it was earlier. Well, I'm nearly done now. I uh, had difficulty getting this on. It took a, a lot longer than I thought because everything has to be lined up. You know, all these LEDs and stuff, they all have to be lined up perfectly. So you kind of have to put a few in, wobble the LEDs, get them to sit down, next one sit down, and bit by bit it all falls into place, which is uh, quite satisfying. So what I've done is I've glued up this connector here again, and now I'm gonna, you can't see that, can you? Uh, this connector and also the connector there. I'm just reusing the glue. So basically the glue came off in one bit and now I'm just putting it back on and I've got my hot air set to 200 degrees Celsius and I'm just heating it up and melting up the glue. I've already done that one there. So at this temperature I shouldn't melt all the plastic everywhere. It should just melt the glue. And I'm not holding it on there for a long time either. There we go. Okay, we're all done. It's all nice and clean. It definitely looks better than it did before. And as far as I can see, it's working perfectly. So if you had music with a beat playing, then I suppose it'd be quite nice to fade one into another one. I can see it's a well-made thing. I can see why people are into this. But in my instance here, because of copyright, I'm just gonna be going from one of my videos to the He-Man video that I mentioned earlier from Retro Tech Repair. Now, I'm plugged into channel two. Roger from Retro Tech Repair is plugged into channel three. The reason I've done these two channels is because these were the two channels that were at fault. I witnessed the faults on channel two, they're gone now, and channel three, I didn't witness any fault at all. All I can think is that when it was on phono here, the button at the back was to the line, so it was expecting to see like a higher voltage coming in so it didn't destroy itself. Uh, and instead of that, maybe millivolts was going into it from, for example, a turntable. That's all I can think of, I don't know. Either that or it's fixed itself or maybe it's intermittent and maybe after another 10 minutes use, it might go, I really don't know. But since I've been messing with it, channel three has been working. So uh, uh, yeah, let me just show you what's what. So this is the fader here. I've got A, this side, that's A, and that side's B. I've got A set to number two and B set to number three. So I'm channel two. Roger's channel three. So when we're over here, it will be all me. When it's there, it'll be all Roger. And in the middle, it'd be both of us. So check this out now. If I press play, right, so you can see right now, from I'm here. But if I go there, I'm not here. Let's undo then. Now if I go to Roger, 
And if I go all the way here, and it, it's you will hear Roger, the end here. but you won't hear him here. If I put it in the middle, permanent you will hear both of us. And obviously you can do it slightly more me or slightly more Roger. Now, let's put it all to me a minute. If you have a look here, it's kind of interesting. So it's definitely fixed, but I still think the right-hand side is a little bit weaker than the left-hand side, because if you look, you have it sometimes where it's equal, but then more often than not, the left-hand side will be one light higher than the right. So I'm not sure if this here is actually perfect or not. Maybe if I was to do that a few times, it might start wearing in a bit more. But yeah, you see now, to me, it always seems to be a little bit higher on this side. And as far as I know, unless something happens with YouTube, when I do my videos, I have them equal. So although my uh, camcorder is stereo, I've had to put a mono mic on because people didn't like the sound of stereo. But you can see it's nothing like it was before. And if I was to unplug that, it sounds different. That's going to be okay. And then if I unplug that one, that's going to be okay. it sounds yeah, different. Some of these I just need to tighten up a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Right, okay, so uh, that's that. Volume here, down, volume, down, and uh, here. So that would be everything off, and then... There we have it. Never knew this would come in handy so much. And that's it. And if you want to do effects, I can put effects to uh, three here, which would be Roger. And listen. And then we'll put it back in the mechanism, kind of this way around. And you can do it even more. I think that should be it. Let's connect it back. Oh, well, it's coming soon. And off. But, well, we can deal with that. And if we do me. Excellent. There we go. Uh, other things like you can do, uh, you can change the sounds and stuff with this here. the passenger seat so you can get And do you remember this thing here? Absolutely perfect. I mean, what on earth caused that before? And it does make a difference. Lazy cat. And this one? Looks like rigor mortis is setting. Every one of them make a difference. Because it was in a different position a minute ago. Oh, look at that. So then, whilst it's doing that, Swiping motion doesn't seem to work. Oh no! As far as that What's going on there? It doesn't Right, let's put it on pause. So there we have it. It probably would have been more interesting if Channel 3 was completely dead, but I still thought it was interesting the way that this had left and right built into here. I would have sure that was going to be something to do with a jack or maybe a chip or something. I didn't think it would be as simple as that. But the real confusing thing for me is what was going on here? Every single time I moved that, even just a tiny bit, whomp, whomp, it just was instant the second you went like that. Why unsoldering it from there and putting it in here and putting that one onto here, why did that fix it? If it was a cold solder joint, I would have thought that maybe it would have gone from minus 32 decibels maybe to two decibels or to minus 10 decibels or something you think it would have just affected the range you don't think it would have gone crazy like it did especially affecting every single channel it didn't matter what channel you on as soon as you turned that one on a tiny bit it made that noise really strange novelty noise good noise but really really strange if you know what's happened there please put it down in the comments below because i really can't see anything that would have caused that but i think people will know the answer to that Vince from the future quickly jumping in here. I've been messing around with this for a couple of hours and it really is very good. Obviously, it's not designed for playing YouTube videos, but when you play tunes that it's kind of designed for, it's, uh, it's pretty special. So I noticed Matt was playing some Robert Miles and I thought, oh, do I know this? Put this song on here, 250 million views. Yes, of course I know it. Heard it hundreds of times, probably back in the day when I used to go to Ibiza when I was 18. But uh, it's uh, it's amazing. It actually picks up the beats off the song. And to me, it seems to be correct because when I played a slow, slower song earlier, it was up 92. And every time that little red light flashes is when you want to kind of move to the music. So uh, it's pretty special. Also, this effects down here is all in the instructions. So for example, you 
can have a radio speaker, you can have a tube amp, and it really does make it sound different. You can have echo, delay, reverb. So there's all different stuff here. It's uh, it's pretty clever. And then when you, I see, I can't play it to you because of uh, copyright. But when you sync both of these in, then basically you have the time offset and the tempo difference down here. Don't understand that bit yet but it's all very very clever stuff it is really a nice bit of kit so massive thanks matt i can really see why people would be into this kind of stuff so uh, me i'm kind of not musically inclined that way at all would i be able to put in to time two songs one going out and one going in mm, maybe i could do if somebody was showing me how to do it and i just had two records to do but then if you gave me another one i think it would probably take me a hundred goes to get it to kind of go smoothly from one to another but uh yeah it's uh it's nice it's a nice bit of kit so i hope you enjoyed this video if you did give it a massive thumbs up and uh, i will hopefully see you all very soon thanks for watching